Welcome to Studio Spotlight. Today we're featuring Angela Walters. Hey Angela, how you doing? I'm doing great. This is so much fun being here at Handy Quilter Academy, getting yes. to do some fun and I sailing know. off into this room a little bit to hang out. So thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, we're so happy that you could take the time. So I am so excited to talk about your quilting journey today. Um, you know, people always ask, how did you get started? Well, it's so fun because that's the, that's the question, right? right? We see somebody that we like think is really good at something, mm -hmm. and we're like, oh, what's the story? Right. You know, she must have been born really crafty, mm -hmm. or she stood the long arm and it just flowed out of her. Right. That is not how that happened at all. <laughs> and so I'll give you the short version. Okay. Uh, I was never crafty as a child, like okay. in the creative sense of the word. Uh -huh. I mean, I was always, you know, crafty in different crafty, way. Yeah. You know. And even like in home ec in eighth grade, I failed the sewing machine test. Twice. Like you had to pass this test to, to pass home ec. And I remember thinking like, I'm never gonna be able to do this. It was just like looking at an engine of a car to me, oh. like it looked no different. And so, you know, you fast forward and mm -hmm. I'm a fast food manager. Like I always say, I don't have a degree in art. I have a degree in fast food with a minor in French fries, right? And so my husband, I met through fast food and his grandpa made quilts. And that was the first oh. time I came into contact with that. And, you know, I didn't have a grandpa really growing up. We mm -hmm. didn't live close to family. And so when I loved, when I saw the quilts, I thought, oh, and I asked him to show me and he did. And, and so then he was my quilting buddy. Awesome. And we made the first several quilts together mm -hmm. and he was so encouraging and so fun to quilt with. And, you know, he was a great teacher because he's like, ah, it's fine and it's great and whatever. And that block is wonderful. So it, I think when you can learn in that encouraging environment, it's so freeing and so fun. And so I try to recreate that with my students. And we hand quilted the first several quilts and turns out I'm not a good hand quilter. I know, right? <laughs> but I don't have to be good at something to enjoy it. And that's kind of like my mantra. Just because you're not skilled at it at this moment doesn't mean you can't enjoy the process, right? right? But I'm not a perfectionist. I'm a people pleaser. It's a totally different neuroses, right? Mm -hmm. But grandpa, um, we hand quilted and I think, you know, he made these quilts for family reunions. And as he's getting older, you know, his hands aren't working as well. And so he, basically strong-armed my husband into buying me a long arm, even though we had never seen one or used one, you know. And um, so we got that first long arm and it turns out I loved it. And I always hate telling the story because it's like, oh, I didn't know what I was doing and I got a long arm and then look at me now, right? But that's like 20 years okay. of trial and error and refining and they, you just have to know there was a lot of crappy quilting in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed the process because grandpa told me I was the greatest and I believed him, you know, so it was lots of fun. And you know, over the years, quilting for customers and then kind of turning that into teaching mm -hmm. and realizing not everybody loves machine quilting as much as we do. Mm. I mean, it's a shock for sure. I was like, come on guys, this is not your punishment for finishing your quilt top. Right. The machine quilting is the best part. Mm -hmm. Binding is the punishment for finishing your quilt top. <laughs> I don't like binding, obviously. Um, although I will say these are all bound. So it's the only ones in my collection. So there we go. <laughs> Very impressive. So anyway, then into teaching and kind of using the different avenues that are available now to teach, whether it's video coming in person to mm -hmm. academy, whether it's my live chats. And so I just, I love continuing on that legacy that grandpa left me um, of encouraging and, you know, always positive. And so it's, it's great. And I mean, unfortunately grandpa's not here anymore, right. but um, he left kind of like a golden halo or a inheritance to me. And so I, I'd always tell Jeremy, well, grandpa would want me to have a quilt shop. <laughs> Grandpa would want me to have a vet center, and I say it half joking. But if he were if he were still around, he would just be tickled. Um, he would think I charge way too much for fabric for mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. because to him, like Walmart fabric was special fabric. But um, so it, it's kind of fun. I don't I didn't grow up with quilts, and I, sometimes I see stories like, oh, this quilt's been in my family for generations, mm -hmm. and I think that's a lovely story. And I kind of wish I had stuff, but I do have this story, and that, yeah. so that's my thing that I'm passing on to other people. Your legacy. Well, mm -hmm. I love that. That is so cool. So um, can you think of any quilts that you've made that you feel like were really um, like milestones in your career? Yeah, for sure. So it's, it's interesting because when you quilt for customers mm -hmm. or when I quilt for customers, I didn't have to make the quilts or bind them. I got to just do the fun part, yes. right? So the first several quilts that I quilted while I was learning, you know, my craft was stuff that grandpa had collected over the years. And so even though not one single one stands out to me, yeah. but those quilts, that collection that I worked through that were like ones that he didn't make, he bought them at thrift stores and garage sales. They were oh. special quilts, pieced with love is what I like to say. Mm -hmm. That quilt was pieced with love. Yes. Anyway, so really that section of quilts and learning a lot through that, and there's this one quilt 
that I got to the end of it and I realized I didn't make the backing big enough. <laughs> now, this is before YouTube because back in my day, you know, we didn't have yeah, that. Yeah. So I didn't know what to do. There's no tutorials or blogs mm -hmm. or anything. So I'm like, crap. So I took it to grandpa when it was finished and I said, I did the only thing I could do. I just chopped the border off the end. And he was like, no problem. I'll just put that under the pillow. Cause in my mind, there was no way I could fix that or come back from that. So that, yeah. that quote, but even like you can go so wrong and it still be okay. Mm -hmm. Right. But then, you know, you fast forward to, um, doing the midnight quilt show. Yeah. That very first quilt, you know, when we, when I was talking with Craftsy, when that first started, they mm -hmm. were like, what kind of format do you want? Cause they had asked me to do a YouTube show and I'm right. like, I don't know what format do you want? So I told him my favorite thing, we're on a phone call with like these 20 some year old guys, mm -hmm. you know, in that industry. And I'm like, I love when the kids finally go to bed mm -hmm. and I get my glass of wine and I quilt and I listen to my headphones and it's just me. And they're like, that's a thing. And I'm like, I don't <laughs> know. Yes. That's a thing. So the first quilt right out the gate, I was like trying to like because if this didn't work, it, I couldn't be anybody then myself, right? Right. right. And so that very first quilt um, was definitely memorable because, like, you know, I designed the pattern, I quilted the heck out of it, and it was just like, here we are. And so it was kind of, it was kind of fun. So that definitely, definitely sticks with me. And of course, there's others throughout mm -hmm. the years, you know, ones that I've made for my children or or things like that. Um, but it's kind of funny. For me, I'm the opposite of most quilters. Uh -huh. Like I pay people to piece and bind. Yes. Right. So it's kind of most people pay people to quilt. Mm -hmm. And so really at this point, it's just about um, pieces that I can show and travel with. And mm -hmm. so uh, I, I love that a quilt doesn't have to be super over the top or even a show winner to mm -hmm. be memorable. Like those quilts all have things for us. And so um, who knows what it will be in the future, what, what quilting will turn out then. But I think, you know, celebrating those. So I do have some of those, but those are just a couple I can think of. Those were, those were really cool. Yeah, those milestone quilts, they, um, you know, make a difference along the way. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that, uh, you know, you, you've been quilting for so long and you quilt for others. Now, there's one person in particular that you quilt for who is very well known <laughs> in, the, in the quilting industry. Yes. You know who I'm talking about. So, um, and, and people, I'm sure people ask you this all the time, but how did you and Tula, like, you yeah. know, so become quilting BFFs? It's really fun because Tula Pink, I mean, super talented fabric mm -hmm. designer, uber popular, yes. um, so funny and creative. And I'm like, you have so much talent in your pinky nail, <sighs> right? Like, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not naturally good with color. And so I'm good at matching threads mm. to fabric. I mean, I do that all the time, but she did a little like tutorial, like here, you could do this with thread, da, 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 you know, using cones. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's cool. And then she left and I'm like, I don't know what she just did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Tula, we, I like to call her my work wife. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, <laughs> we're two sides of the same coin. You know, she does all the designing and I quote for her. Um, so I had actually going way, way, way back when I decided to quilt for customers, yeah. I decided um, to join a guild and I, you know, I'd learned from grandpa. I had not been a part of a guild mm -hmm. and I was like 23. So, I mean, oh. if I look now, I was even younger, mm -hmm. but they were great. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't have, I don't have any problem inserting myself into a group and talking. Yeah. I'm not shy, obviously, um, being, uh, moving a lot as a child yeah. helped me being yeah. at school. Anyway, so I went to this guild and they were so great. They came across, you know, came around me and showed me how to do things right. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up vending at a show for them. Uh -huh. And it was like I was vending my quilting services, which was funny because that's not really what people are there to buy. But yeah. whatever. But one lady called me and it happened to be Tula's mom. Oh. So she had just opened a shop uh -huh. and she wasn't a quilter at the time. So she didn't know what she was doing. It was great. I knew just a little bit more than she did. And then throughout the years, quilting for her shop and her mm -hmm. family, well, her daughter, Tula became a fabric designer and moved back to Kansas City. Yeah. And that's the Kansas City area. And that's how we got hooked up together. Okay. And it was so, I wish you could know how mind blowing this was because at the point I had been quilting for like seven years, mm -hmm. lots of traditional quilts and I love all quilts. Yeah. There's not a quilt I don't love. Um, but then Tula comes in with like a skull and wants creepy feathers <laughs> or this quilt that's like a big ball. And it's like, it's a spaceship. And I'm like, well, of course it's a spaceship. It needs like jet packs and it needs like a little alien because that was before self-flying yes. alien ships yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so it was oh, yes, so it's been really fun and and we i really I, what i love about quilting for her and now she's the only person i quilt for besides for myself mm -hmm. um it keeps me sharp yeah. because like you know she gives me really cool quilts and i try really hard to do something different and unique and on each one which you know like all i can do is take the same stuff and rearrange it differently correct but um what's funny is i've quilted for her since i was pregnant with my youngest and she's 14 now oh, so wow. i can track how long we've been together as work wise <laughs> um, by my child but i went to her house for some you know i every once in a while i go pick up a quilt or whatever mm -hmm. and um, she showed me like her room of quilts and it's like a 
a timeline of all of our stuff. Oh. And I'm like, some of them, I'm like, I don't even remember, but I probably have quilted hundreds of quilts for her over the yeah. years, you know, for markets and collections. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's really fun to be that comfortable with somebody because mm -hmm. um, she, we talk about this all the time. It's like, she gives me the quilt. She doesn't give me any instruction. Uh -huh. um, rarely do I even know what it's for. You know, like we're just both so busy. And so then I get to put my own twist on it and get yeah. back to her. And then of course she sends me the nicest texts, which are really good, you know. So it's really fun uh, to quilt for her and to see how we both have kind of come up at the same time, yeah. um, especially her with all that and me with the quilting. Well, real quick, funny story. So yeah. Yeah. we're at Quilt Market, you know, uh -huh. having some beverages, tasty yes. adult beverages, yes, yes, yes. and talking to Kathy, her mom, and Kathy's like, oh my gosh, I just crazy think this all started from that quilt show, how we, because she kind of hooked us up. And then Kathy starts talking about how cool it was that I had a long arm in my booth at that show. And I'm oh. like, yeah, it was like a pin drop, like uh -huh. needle scratch. I'm like, I didn't have a booth, a machine, machine in my booth. She's like, no, you did. And I was like, no, I did it. And she goes, oh, I called the wrong person. <laughs> so, so it all started with a mistake. It all started with a mistake, right? So, but here's what's sad. I don't know who she meant to call. And I always feel a little bad when I tell that story, but. But you know, like I think the thing is, you never know what opportunities will present, mm -hmm. whether it's business-wise yeah. or a creative endeavor. Yeah. And I think you just have to be open to taking those opportunities, even if they weren't meant for you. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, quilting for her is a lot of fun, and and um, the stuff that we've done over the years has been pretty pretty epic for sure. It is. It is. I I have to admit here, um, the very first uh, machine quilting book that I bought was yours, and the very second one was the one that you and Angela, or you and Angela, you and Tula did together. Uh -huh. And I was like, gosh dang it, I can do this. For sure. I can do this. For sure. We so. tried to capture like our working together, mm -hmm. or, you know, and it, it's kind of hard to put that down. Like yeah. when people are like, what, oh. are your, what is your process? I'm like, well, I start, don't like it, and then I switch it up, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. hard to document that, but we tried really hard to like, kind of be authentic, like, okay, while keeping it, patterns that are achievable and yes. designs that are achievable. Mm -hmm. But I, I will say like, throughout the years, she's kept me sharp and we, mm -hmm. we kind of like iron sharpens iron kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And really working with her has been one of the highlights for sure of, of all I've ever done. All you've ever done. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I appreciate what you've done. It's, <laughs> it's been so much fun. I actually got to see um, a Paducah one year. She had a, a whole bunch of her quilts there mm -hmm. and saw them and I just marveled at your quilting. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun to see mm -hmm. in person. So yeah, you know, just a little bit of fangirl. <laughs> oh, anyway, and I have, I have actually, I took a class from you, Claire, back way back when too. I was remembering that one of the ones local here in Utah and like, and here we oh, are now. Fun. I know, isn't it crazy? Fun. I know, it's totally It's like, is. you just never know where, where you're gonna no. be in a few years. I think you should be open to possibilities. Yep. And I think in, especially in my classes, when I see students are so scared and I get it, especially when you're in a class setting, it's not fun to learn something mm -hmm. difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but like, you just try those things and you yep. open yourself up to it. And if it doesn't work, you don't do it. And, and even here, people come so nice, like, oh, I love your quilting. And I'm like, listen, if it was crap, I wouldn't have brought it, right? Yeah. Like I'm bringing my best yes. because I want to, you know, inspire, but I don't want to intimidate. So I right. try to try to, you know, toe that line as much as I can. Exactly. Exactly. No, that's so great. So I want to talk about this quilt behind us because this was, this was one of your quilt alongs? Yes. Yeah. So really, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny, you just throw stuff out there and uh -huh. stuff picks up. So I was in Denver one night, we just wrapped up filming Midnight Quilt Show in a couple mm -hmm. hours. And I was feeling pretty inspired. And I thought I'm going to do my own videos. I, Kind of new Midnight Quilt Show uh -huh. was working its way out. And so I'm yeah. like, I need to do some of my own stuff. And I thought, let's do a quilt along. And I'm like, I mean, literally it took like 30 minutes put together. I'm like, I'll call it the, oh, what's all the keywords? I can either free motion, <laughs> challenge, quilting along. I think I got them all in there, right? Ugh. And so then I posted like, I'm going to start this. I'm going to do this thing, start a Facebook group. And then I get a call from like my staff, like, what's going on? What's going on? Like, I guess I should fill you guys in. Oh. Well, then this challenge, this bit, first video series launches. Well, I go to, off to teach on a cruise. Oh, and you're you like, serious? what's going on? Like, I'm like, okay, guys, I will never do that to you again. I didn't, I had no idea how well it would go over, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I really didn't. And people are like, oh, okay. I didn't. Like, I, mm -hmm. I didn't know. I've never done that before. A little project, Just right? a little project. And so it has evolved over the years. I think now we're like on 14, 15. Yeah, so yeah. it's a video series where we work together on a project. Mm -hmm. And the first ones were like, you know, you can make this quilt pattern. Yes. But then over the years, I'm like, if I could get a panel. So finding some panels that were available, but then eventually realizing I wanted to make my own. Mm -hmm. And so we made the investment in a large format fabric printer. Oh. And so now we can create, and I can design a panel that yeah. nobody has to piece, that we can quilt along together. The videos are free. Mm -hmm. You don't have to buy the panel. That's always been 
my motto. Like I want to make the barrier to entry very low mm -hmm. because free motion quilting is scary. So I don't mm -hmm. charge for a lot of that stuff. I monetize it with the product, but you don't have to have it. And you don't have to have any a free motion foot, some fabric and some thread in a machine. That's all you have to have. And so that has been a lot of fun. That has evolved over the years. And the idea being, I can't be in everybody's room, but we yes. will do difficult stuff if we can do it together. Right. The, it's, mm -hmm. That's like why our friends drag us to things like, this yes. class is going to be hard, come with me. And you're like, okay, right? Um, and so it's just a way to have that class style. So we will launch a video. I'll say, okay, the, it's starting whenever, and mm -hmm. it'll be six or seven videos. We're in the middle of one right now, not mm -hmm. this one. Um, and then I do live chats yeah. almost every week where I can answer questions just to make it like a class. And we have a Facebook group. So it, it's, it's a fun way for me to get to teach yeah. even if I can't travel. So, exactly. So, and then it's so funny because I designed that this is a fabric panel. Yeah. So you don't have to piece anything and you can quilt along with me. And my idea was that way somebody doesn't have to put time or effort or money into a quilt top. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I would totally make them use a quilt top, but nobody would do that. I get it. Um, but then I have people like, it's so pretty. I don't want to ruin it. I'm like, no, <laughs> please, it's a panel. So it's so fun for me when I travel and go places and people bring, mm -hmm. like we just had a handy culture truck event yeah. at our retail spot and somebody brought a quilt and had me sign the back. And I'm like, not only did they listen, you watch it, but they listen to what I had to say. And then I go home and tell my children that some people do listen to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of what that is back there. That's why, you know, and it's funny because in a challenge, I'm, I'm, it's like a teaching sample. Yes. So there's a bunch of different stuff. And I'm like, but even with all that different designs yeah. in every corner, it, I think it's fine. Oh, it's beautiful. And I think it's a good illustration that when people are machine quilting, and if it's not, they have this plan. And if the plan is not working, change the plan. Right. I don't know if you've ever been in a quilt. You're like, this sucks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, and people will keep going. I'm like, yes. no, if it sucks, don't keep doing it. Like not the quilting sucks. The plan It's not yeah. flowing the yeah. way you want it to do. Mm -hmm. That's not what you're feeling. Just switch it up. Just switch sure. it up. Mm -hmm. Change that design. Mm -hmm. What is it? The, um, once is a mistake three times design choice two yep. times. Yeah. Yep. 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 So exactly. it's like, if you make a mistake, don't rip it out. Just do another one somewhere else. Yeah. And then it's, but I tell people the quilt police are not out there. No. They're in your head. Oh. I mean, truly, I, there's people, and it breaks my heart. And I'm like, I, I'll have to go to some students and be like, look, I wouldn't let anybody come in here and talk to you the way you're talking to yourself, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you do that either. Exactly. You know, not in front of me. Do it. In, but I, I get it, though. I mean, we're all critical of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were just talking, yes, we watching the video of yourself. Like, <laughs> nobody likes to do that. So I think it's just, it's a, hopefully a good reminder that, you know, it's fun and it's quilting, and let's not make this so scary, I guess. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Just enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. So talking about the process, let's talk about some of these beautiful quilts you have here. I love that they're all small. Like, I think so many people think that a quilt has to be big, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it doesn't. No, it definitely doesn't. But I tell you, as I traveled, mm -hmm. my samples have gotten smaller and smaller. So, you know, like I came here and I did trunk show, and it was like bo most, you know, mostly pictures. And so I just brought a couple pieces that kind of show where I'm at now. Okay. And I think what's cool is like, or what's important to remember is, Every master was once a disaster, right? Right. So like, this is where I am now, but in that trunk show or that pr presentation, I showed some of my early quilting yeah. with the big hearts. And I was like, I was so proud of this. <laughs> I took a picture of the front and the back of the quilt. So I think the thing is like, I want to show these, but this is where I'm now, but you know, it's a process for sure. Yeah. So when I, when I stopped quilting for customers, except mm -hmm. for Tula, I got to play around with more threads because in the beginning mm -hmm. it was like, I want the quilting to blend in. I want to match the thread color. So really what I'm kind of into right now is I call it thread scribbling. Mm -hmm. And I know some people call it thread painting, but it's really just playing with a bunch of different threads, throwing it down. And if it doesn't look good, you put more on it. Now, this is actually a picture that Jeremy took mm -hmm. in Antelope Canyon. Oh, it's beautiful. And I printed it on fabric and then loaded it. This was right after COVID hit. And I'm like, I need, I need some quilting therapy, therapy. right? Like I'm stressed. I'm freaking out about mm -hmm. my shop. I'm, everybody was freaking out. Um, and so this was kind of like working on it. And so just adding details and really, I think the thing to remember is the more you put on there, the less people will know where to focus <laughs> and the more they will see the overall texture. Um, and what I love about thread scribbling is if you don't like the way something looks, you just put more thread on top of it until yep. it goes away. And so this was um, a lot of fun. One of the first thread scribbling ones I did. And I just, I loved it. Playing with metallic threads mm -hmm. and holographic threads and just all the kinds of threads is, was a lot of fun. And so this actually hangs up in my office when I'm, when I'm not traveling with it. 
And we can show the back if you want. Yeah, I actually do. faced this, right? So oh, I will like, look at that. I don't do a lot of binding. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I think the two here are the only binding I've done. <laughs> uh, but I think it's a fun, a fun practice. And so I taught yeah. a thread scribbling class mm -hmm. at our long arm event last week just to see how it goes. So I think mm -hmm. we might see this in a future challenge. Oh, that's very cool. So then I have, and then the next piece over mm -hmm. here, I have a dear friend that helps me with everything. Her name's Irene, and she, she is such a help. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to make her... A, a little piece here and um, she's a Seattle Seahawks fan I won't hold that against her because I'm a Chiefs fan let's go Chiefs <laughs> anyway so I used some of her favorite colors but again just just putting a lot of stuff yeah. down having fun with it and my job when I'm teaching is to get people past that first mistake and know mm -hmm. if you keep going it's gonna mm -hmm. be fine um, but I did give it to her unbound I said I don't know if this is a great gift or a poor <laughs> gift but I don't feel like binding it she said I'll, I'll bind it it's fine I'll totally bind it and so then it hangs up on her wall and I, I asked her if I could borrow it for here to bring to, to show that's beautiful and this is just a blue piece of fabric yep. that you put the design on Absolutely. with like I don't know a 75 million. Yep. different colors of thread. Did you use like yes. every green and blue you Pretty had? much, pretty much. And you know, having a retail shop, we have lots of threads. So I'm like, I need that perfect green. Let me go get it. Um, but really it was more about like kind of setting the grid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with a color that blends. Yeah. And then going through and adding those pops of color oh. and playing around. And so it was really, really fun to audition, which is one of my favorite things is picking out the thread colors and, and see what it go and just kind of relaxing and just letting it flow. And I know for some quilters that's really hard to do. Yes. I get it. But man, it is fun. It's really fun if you can get to that point. Now, some quilters are like, I'm just trying to breathe and quilt at the yes. same time. I understand that's not easy, um, but it's just enjoying it. So these two are really playful and fun Beautiful. and good times. Now this kind of looks similar. I'll okay. put this over to you, hold it out. There's a pin in there because the facing's okay. not finished. That's okay. Don't that's okay. poke um, yourself. <laughs> do you know about Elmer's glue holding you all know, of this You know, I have heard about that and I was like, um, okay, never mind. I'm it's gonna do real. that. So peer pressure is a thing, mm -hmm. right? Even with mm -hmm. quilters. So me and Irene and Tina, my quilting friends, we went to QuiltCon, not this year, but last year. Okay. And that was my first time going just to go, not oh, to teach. You you didn't work the show. I you didn't. just went to the show. Yeah. I'm so jealous. I've done was, that forever. It was fun. Oh, you should do it. Man. So the, um, oh gosh, I'm going to forget, the Maywood Challenge. Uh -huh. uh, Cherry, the Cherrywood Challenge. Cherrywood Challenge. Yeah. So they're like, oh, we should do this. And I'm like, I don't really ever do those. Like, we should do it. I'm like, okay, fine. Because, you know, yeah. peer pressure. Uh -huh. And so that was um, what I made. I never actually got it entered in, but it's a raw edge applique thing where you quilt through multiple mm -hmm. layers of fabric and you cut away. Yep. And on my YouTube channel, I did like a live chat with like pictures that kind of go through the process. But again, it, it's fun to use quilting in a different way as a way to practice, but having a finished thing. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes when we're practicing, we get a piece of fabric, we quilt a few swirls, we think it doesn't look good and we're yeah. done. done. You know, so it's like, let's do something small. And when mm -hmm. you're finished, you have a completed project. You can either yeah. hang on the wall or put in the doggy bed, depending on how you feel. Exactly. So I think it's, it's, it's really fun to start with smaller projects. And so all the panels for my challenge started out 42 by, by 54. Yeah. And now we have some bigger options, but keeping it within that manageable size for yeah. sure. Yeah, a little, little easier to get finished too when it's a little smaller. That right? is true, that's true. Yeah. And you know, and I will say this, the challenge I do, the video series I do on the sewing machine and long arm. Yes. One of the drawbacks <laughs> to having a long arm is that it's a six week video series. Mm -hmm. And so people are always like, how do I do this on the long arm? And I'm like, listen, if I were doing this participating, mm -hmm. I would wait to the end and do it all together. Yeah. So there are like trying to like bridge the gap between the different uh, machines that we have, but really all the designs go together the same way. Very cool. So, yeah. That's very cool. And then I'll show you this one. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how much yeah. time we have. Here, but we'll, oh, we, we've got as much time as okay. you want. Well, <laughs> let me get the rest of the quilts I brought. So I bring this, this is my, Sample I only bring out if people ask a specific question, but it's a question I get asked a lot. So okay. I bring it out. And the okay. question is always, I like how you quilt things dense, but I want it to be soft and cuddly. Okay. And I think the batting is what does that. Mm. So this is quilted with a natural fiber batting. Okay. It gives you that nice drape. So you're gonna be my little test okay. my tester. Tell me, it's is it cuddly? Oh, does it, it feel is. stiff? It's no, no, it does not feel like it's been quilted to death, yep. even though it kind of has. Yeah, it has. It's never yeah. been washed. So oh, there's really? that. Wow. Right? So if somebody's making a, like if I'm making a quilt for my nephew and mm -hmm. I don't want to brag, but I'm the favorite aunt. I, I <laughs> love my nieces and nephews. I love spending time with all of them. Um, it's so much fun. But if I was to make it a quilt for my nephew or my niece is mm -hmm. young, I'm going to quilt it to death to help it last yes. longer. Oh, true. But if you want it to have that cuddle, yeah, that, that nice drape, the natural fiber batting. Now, some of these samples are actually quilted with soft and stable. Yeah. Right. These oh, are, yes. These are wall hangings. This mm -hmm. is not cuddly at all. This is, this, these things could probably walk away if mm -hmm. I let them, mm -hmm. but it does, you can get that same result. So um, I like to pull that out and be like, look, this thing is quilted to death. 
It was actually supposed to be much bigger, but I got about that far. I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm over it. Tap now. Close. But the, since it is a natural fiber, it does have a memory. So it kind of has like a little yeah. crease, which is fine. But so bed quilts, cuddly quilts, natural fiber is great. So that's the example. I so I brought that in case anybody asked that question during my trunk show. Nobody yeah. did. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what else have we got here? All right, got two more for you. More. So this is another oh, teaching sample. So, pretty. so when I teach classes, especially in the little like skill builders mm -hmm, we're doing, mm -hmm. um, what you put around a design is just as important as the design itself. Yes. And I, I like to joke, but this is 100% true. I'm not a better quilter than anybody else. I'm just way better at hiding my mistakes. <laughs> So when you're quilting a motif or a main element, what mm -hmm. you put around it is going to determine how much it shows up. Right. So quilt that same feather throughout that, that whole area and then putting different fillers around it yeah. so you could see the result you're going to get. Yeah. And so I want to equip and enable people to think, oh, look, if you don't like how it looks, keep going because you can highlight it or hide it with the rest of the quilting. And so that's kind of my practical, my teaching tool. So if you put something similar mm -hmm. around it, it's going to blend in a little bit more. Yep. If you put something that's really different, it's going to contrast and just kind of showing that we can keep that quilting because I get it. Some people want to rip out their quilting, mm -hmm. but you never become a better quilter after ripping out your quilting, right? It's, it's, oh. That time, if you kept going, you would, you would get better. So again, just a real life example. And the funny story I started saying, this kind of came up last yeah. week, is when you're learning a new skill, any creative skill, but I'm going to talk specifically about machine quilting, I'm on the other side, yeah. right? And I'm saying, this is really great, come yeah. over here. But where you're at, there's a whole sea of suck, mm. <laughs> right? I love that phrase. We'll call it the sea of learning, <laughs> but the sea of suck, and you, it's that process, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. the learning process, but I like learning things and I'm, I'm fine with sucking. Again, I don't have to be good at something mm -hmm. to enjoy it. Um, but I'm calling like, come on, swim through the sea of suck, it's great. And I'm, I can't get you, I can't do that for you. You have right. to practice but I can get you through a straight line as quick as possible. Whereas me, I was just wandering around getting lost in the sea of suck. And so, you know, kind of really getting people over that fear. Like I made a mistake, but keep going and keep going. And then I just get them past that point. And so that's, that's a lot of what I do is cheerleading. Yeah. Which, oh yeah. But the people are like, I love your class. I'm like, I'm just telling you, you're doing a good job because you are, but I, I get it. Like it, it can be really intimidating. And some of us really, especially, um, are hard on ourselves about our quilting and I don't I don't quite understand it but because I you know I'm, I'm out of the sea of suck yeah and so I yeah. try to it's the curse of knowledge I try to remember what it was like to be new at yes. something yes. Um, but really it's, it's just kind of working through it so this is kind of like my practical example of that I love it I love it and you know teaching I always feel like part of it is giving people the confidence mm -hmm. to try mm -hmm. what you showed them mm -hmm. so absolutely I love, I love to it. take yeah. something that is scary mm -hmm. and perceived as difficult mm -hmm. to distill it down to something that seems approachable mm -hmm. without being condescending yes right I mean oh. it, it, it's a it's a fine line I don't be like it's just a swirl mm -hmm. but it's like look it's just a swirl it's just it a can't swirl. hurt you you own it that machine can't beat you you're a functioning adult. You're a smart woman. Do it. So it, it's oh kind of fun to uh, come up with the different analogies to, to get people through. And I, listen, I get it. I'm married to a perfectionist. Oh, you know, I, yeah. I, I understand like, and I want a perfectionist for brain surgery yeah. or setting uh, up my long arm, mm -hmm. right? Like there are <laughs> most times perfectionism is amazing, but in quilting, I have people in my class that have learned how to piece mm -hmm. that are good at it. They've already been through that sea of suck yes. and they don't want to yes. go through it again. All right. And so I'm like, yeah. it's fine. Do whatever. And they're like, uh, <laughs> I want perfect uh -huh. from the start. For sure, for sure. Because they forgot what it took to get them there with their piecing Absolutely. experience. I will they tell you, it. one of my funnest, well, not the funnest, one of the things I love to do when somebody's being really hard on themselves, mm -hmm. I'll, I shouldn't tell because now people will know this, but I'll be like, do you do any other creative thing? Mm -hmm. any, any, mm -hmm. What do you do for a job? And they'll come out like, oh, I garden, I do this. And I'm like, okay, great. So you're a gardener, great. Um, I have always wanted to be a gardener, but I can't. I have a black thumb. I could kill, or I kill everything, great, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, you give it to it. I'm not, no, you don't understand. I can't. Like, no, you can. You can. I'm like, hmm, huh? Weird. And then by the time they realize where I have led them down that road, they're like, <laughs> and sometimes they'll see it coming. They're like, I know what you're doing. I'm like, just sit on it then. Because for some reason, the machine quilting, I get it. it it's just like so scary. And, and it, my, most of what I'm doing is telling me, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fun. Yeah. And I, I have a heart for all machine cultures, but where my, my passion lies mm -hmm. is for people that have the basic skills but are afraid to take it to the next level. Yes. Um, I, true beginners are great and mm -hmm. experts are great. And I, and I feel like I can hit all of those pieces, but like those people that have quilted a few quilts have that desire mm -hmm. but are so frustrated and sad about it. So that, those are my people. And that's like, so I'll teach a class and I'll be like, you, 
Mm. I'm on you. This is, this is us, you know. And so it, it's kind of fun to get to do that. But I'm also new too, like mm -hmm. to things. And so even here at this event, yeah. taking pro stitcher classes, cause it's out of my comfort uh -huh. zone. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh my gosh, my brain is hurting in different ways. <laughs> so I think the thing is to enjoy the process and mm -hmm. it sounds so cheesy. I know it. And I, people are like, roll their eyes. And I'm like, in, when I learned how to long arm, mm -hmm. cause you know, I went right from hand quilting to long arming. Yeah. I didn't quilt on a sewing machine until I started teaching. Yeah. And sometimes people will say, well, why did you not quilt on a sewing machine? We didn't know that you could. Oh. And I'm glad because Jeremy would not have bought me a long arm if he knew I could quilt <laughs> on my sewing machine for sure. Um, but it, it's like working through that process and just having fun with it. So it, it's, it's funny, um, all the different things, analogies and sayings I try to come up with to, to make it not so scary. Mm -hmm. And you just, you'd enjoy that. And then the last quilt I yes, have, I did, yes. the last one I have. Here so we'll one thing you over. should know about me is I'm a national parks nerd. I love it. I so love we it. actually came to Utah um, last spring break and hit up the big national parks here. Oh yeah. And so I decorated our basement in national parks. And so when these panels came out, oh, um, it was just a lot of fun to practice with. So again, if, if you're wanting to learn machine quilting, if the idea of creating your own quilt top or your own panel or your own grid, mm -hmm freaks you out, get a, a big, large print like this and fill it in. I guarantee no matter what you put in, by the time you get to the bottom, you're going to see clear improvement. <sighs> Absolutely. Um, and this is just a bunch of scribbling, right? Like if you zoom in on it, yeah. but the, the idea is when I'm done, I have something I can hang on my wall. And yeah. so I have a couple from the different national parks we've been to in my basement kind of hanging on the wall. And um, then I made my husband a quilt with national parks. I just, we love it all. Yeah, I have, yeah. I have the passport that I get stamped everywhere. Oh. And I know it's for kids, but it can be for adults too. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, I, I gotta get a stamp. I gotta get a stamp. I have the list of all the places. It's, it's funny. Um, but get a panel, get a large mm -hmm. floral fabric and just fill it in. Mm -hmm. Like when you're learning how to machine quilt, whether it's on a long arm or a sewing machine, you're learning two things, mm -hmm. how to drive the machine yes. and how to navigate the path. It's like learning mm -hmm. how to drive a car and navigate a new city at the same time. So let's take oh. some of that out and make it easy with the outline there. Um, when my kids learned how to drive, which nobody <laughs> warned me about that, oh. but it's fine. Yeah. Um, I didn't take them downtown Kansas City and be like, all right, we're gonna learn how to steer the car, right? No. <laughs> You gotta learn to drive and learn to navigate. And so the panel or something to fill in or move along just kind of eliminates one more thing to think about. So oh. I'm, you know, quilters might have some fabric in their stash. You might have a little fabric. Oh. I might have a little fabric. Oh. Find the biggest, busiest print you can mm -hmm. find and fill it in with designs. And then when you're done, sit back and check it out. So that's why I bring this one to, to these kind of events. To show that, I mm -hmm. love that. Okay, so how many national parks have you visited? Oh my gosh, I haven't counted that. I know, that's crazy. I'll tell you the ones I have not visited okay. and are on my bucket list. Glacier Bay, okay. um, Glacier National Park, okay. and Yosemite. So those, oh. and I used to live in California, I've never been there. But really? I've been to like a lot of the others. So I've been to several, I, haven't, I couldn't tell you off the top of my hand. I'd probably have to say 10-ish. Okay. Um, but my goal is when our children move out, I'm yep. gonna get an RV, put a long arm in the back, and then travel <laughs> around and go to different <laughs> national parks. So it's, it's kind of fun. I love that, I love that. Well, it has been such a joy talking Thank with you, you today. Thank you. Getting to know you a little more, especially just hearing about your quilting journey. Mm -hmm. I always think it's so interesting to see, as you said, you know, we all start as disasters. Absolutely. Before we become masters, it really is true. Mm -hmm. We all have our own journey. Yes. And we get there how we get there. We get there how we get there, for sure. So, well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stick around to see some of your quilts after the end of the video. And if you'd like to have your quilt featured, be sure to use hashtag HandyQuilter and we'll pick those up and show those. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe and have fun quilting.